have an anniversary. True Vegan Radio, the podcast, episode number seventy-five. And what else am I willing to grant you, my dear audience, for that anniversary episode of the podcast? Is a special treat. I will treat you and like you've never been treated before, and uh, before your imaginations go all the way south. I have to tell you that it's not going to be anything Chupester related, which sounds arrogant and shouldn't be, but it's band and Truba Negro related. And um, yeah, I'm very happy to announce that on this uh, first episode of this uh, brand new year, 21, 2021, uh, there is no other featured uh, than one of your dearest and most beloved Truba Negro members ever, a member that is no longer with the band, but uh, at the at the time at his time with the band, he was a very very not only popular but very very good looking uh, then young lad, and he goes by the name of Chris Summers. Chris Summers, the drummers, <laughs> the drummer of the band, and uh, yeah, I got uh, to talk to him. I got him on the phone. And I, I, I could quite uh, uh, intensively talk with him about his time with the band. And also at the very end of the podcast, he's going to be revealing that one thing that always uh, uh, tackled my mind, that Rolex drummer thing. Stay tuned and listen up. So thank you, uh, Chris Summers, uh, for joining Juba Jugend Radio. It's a first for uh, 2021. It's the first podcast uh, of the year, and that uh, I'm more than proud that to have you on the podcast. Um, maybe I don't know. Maybe young young followers of Juba Negro or young Juba Jugends might not even know who you are, which is a shame, I would say. <laughs> But just uh, why don't you uh, take us into your your relation with uh, Juba Negro? And uh, what prominent role you were playing back in the days? Well, I joined the band um, after As Cobra. So I was in the band on the next four albums. That is uh, Apocalypse Dude, Scandinavian Leather, uh, Party Animals, and Retox. Uh -huh. I was with the band for uh, like 11 years or something. Uh -huh. um, of course, we had a pretty long break there at some point but um yeah i was the drummer from 97 until 2008 so that's quite quite a long time and uh, you were just rattling off and mentioning the, the the albums those were the most prominent and most of people would say i'm not gonna judge the albums here but yeah. most of people would say um those were the uh, uh uh the best albums that turbo has ever ever put out and you were the prominent And uh, when I joined the Tube Jugend, I was uh, you were the drummer of of of, uh, of Trubo Negro. Not to take anything away from Tommy at the moment, but still, <laughs> Chris Summers was the drummer of Trubo Negro. And there was in my well teenage-ish or twin twin-ish mind, there was no way that anybody else could to, could take the drums for for the band. But uh, because you were so prominent, you people can see you on all the old posters and all the the, the tons of video footage, the DVDs they have. And the movie about the about the band, you were always on there. Yeah. So, um, what? But let's take take us back to your beginnings with the band. What? How did you? How can anyone? Um, before, because we all know there has there have been drummers drummers before you came. Mm -hmm. um, how can anyone join a, a prominent band like Trouba Negro and just be in the band as a drummer? How did that came uh, come across? Uh, the thing was that I I was playing in a band called the Big Bang. At the time, mm -hmm. uh, like a local Oslo band, uh, yeah, we we released an album in '95, I think, and uh, and uh, 
so you know, I was part of the Oslo rock scene, and I was hanging out with uh, Rune quite a lot through a common friend of ours. And uh, and one day Rune called me and said, "Hey, do you want to try and play drums for us?" Because I, you know, I was a huge fan of Ask Cobra when when that one came out. And uh, yeah, and I was hanging a lot with uh, Rune at the time, so I was asked to. To come for a rehearsal, and then um, that was that one rehearsal, and uh, Ren. they decided that they wanted me to play. So um, think of back of the Big Bang Band. Um, mm -hmm. Was it a similar mu music to Trouba Negro? Is that a, a secret hint for all the Trouba uh, Trouba Negro lovers who like the music? Is that a secret hint for if you wanna if you want to listen to a uh, early a style of early Turbo Negro uh, records, go ahead and uh, uh, um, download or listen to the uh, the big band music. Is that the same sort of music you were playing back in the day with this band? Uh, no, not at all, actually. It was, it was quite different. But the point with Big Bang, when we, uh, me and Einstein, the, the main songwriter in that band, he, he, is, he is Big Bang. Mm -hmm. Kind of, and um, uh, me and him started the band when we were in high school together, and we kind of bonded on our uh, common interest for like DC hardcore and uh, California punk hardcore and and New York hardcore and stuff like that, plus a lot of classic rock too, because both uh, him and uh, his and my. Uh, my father were both in uh, in the music business from way back, so we, you know, we we grew up with a lot of classic sixties, seventies, eighties stuff, uh, classic rock. So the the first Big Bang album is kind of a schizophrenic thing, mix of all kinds of stuff that we were inspired by at the time. So it's yeah. it's not not like Turbo at all. So give us a give us some benchmarks so just from music wise like it doesn't have to be Norwegian but what benchmarks would be uh, Big Bang benchmarks uh, similar music I don't know you know it's like everything from Circle Jerks and uh, Fugazi and uh, Huskeru to uh -huh. uh, Curtis Mayfield and uh, and uh, the Crosby Stills Nash you know. That's like, broad. That's yeah, a broad one. That's a wide yeah, yeah, it, it, it doesn't sound like that, but that's what we were listening to at the time. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, then, then you, um, then you hung out with Rune. I mean, how can you? Uh, you painted the picture pretty well, but I'm, I'm curiously asking, uh, mm -hmm. what, what is the music? What was the music scene in Oslo back then? Was it like all the, 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 the Norwegian ro uh, rock stars hanging out in the same bars, or, and, and just. Uh, mingling with each other or or is it just coincidence that you knew Rune? No, you know, Oslo is not that big and uh, there are, at the time there were a couple of cool um, uh, rock bars. One of them is still there called Last Train. Uh, it's been there for 30 years and uh, you know, so and at, at that time uh, we weren't really rock stars. We were in our early 20s, you know, all of us. Uh -huh. So everybody was just was a, um, a local band scene and we um, met at the same places and went to each other's shows you know yeah so, and, and that uh, was a what was the first re rehearsal you mentioned and mm -hmm. uh was it hard to to grasp the idea of turbo's you, you not only music but the drum style is that hardest thing i'm not a drummer and i'm uh no not really it came quite natural to me because I, I I I've been listening to a lot of music like that for for many years and uh, as I said, the Big Bang was we were dabbling with all genres and at the time I was young I was just uh, you know I I I wasn't um, what can you say. Um, developed as a drummer yet i was just uh -huh. experimenting with uh, all kinds of stuff so it just came natural to me to play with them and, and of course i knew the songs because i i was a fan of the band from before you yeah. yeah 
Mm-hmm. So you you join you joined the band, and what happened next? What was your your how did how is how is life or how how did, did life with Turbo start, and what did it develop into? Um, after your when was the first time you actually recorded an album with them? What, what do you still remember that year? Yeah, that was we recorded uh, Apocalypse Dudes. I guess we started uh, late ninety seven, maybe because uh-huh. it was released sometimes in March, April in 98. So it was a couple of months before that. And, you know, when we recorded Apocalypse Dudes, you know, Turbo was still a, quite a small band. We were touring Europe for a month at the time, you know, in, in a small van, nine-seater van with the, the equipment in the back and uh, sleeping on people's couches. And, you know, uh-huh. that was before Apocalypse Dudes. So when we recorded um, Apocalypse Dudes, I was, you know, everybody was had daytime, uh, had day jobs, except Knut, I think, and uh-huh. maybe, Tom, maybe Tom. And, you know, I don't remember that much of the recording of the album. It was like kind of, for me at least, because I had to work in the daytime. I was working at a record store. Yeah. So I was at work. In the daytime, came to the studio at night. Some nights we were up till like three in the morning recording, and then I went to work. And, uh-huh. and I, I wasn't really a part of the creative process that much on that that album. But when, as you were as you were uh, uh, playing those songs on the drums, mm-hmm. um, looking back at this album, and most of them, I have to say, my what what I can tell is that most of the people still think that Apocalypse Dudes is the best to work to well ever mm-hmm. and probably or some people would even go as far as saying that that would be the, that's the best punk rock album of the 90s and my question is as you were de- playing on that album rehearsing and and in, in the studio mm-hmm. did you at one point notice that there's something really big developing here there's something really grand that you are working on a really killer kick-ass album did it ever cross your mind that what we are doing right now is really really good yeah after, after a little while i started to understand that and we were really uh, really stoked when the album was finished and we we kind of knew we had something something special going uh, mm. were there any other songs that you wanted to put on the album but never did it's just uh i don't i don't remember to be honest yeah, yeah, yeah i don't think we had that many other songs yeah because i mean yeah i mean just we just listen everybody can listen to it and you notice that it's really really good music so then then you guys released the, the record and then off you were for stardom you, t- you started touring europe and everybody was like whoa there's this new band from oslo is that is, is, is that how it romantically developed or well, what were your next steps in, in, with yeah, the band? Uh, you know, the, before uh, Apocalypse Dudes, you know, during the As Cobra touring of the As Cobra album, when I joined the band, things were kind of starting to happen a little bit in Europe, you know, and we were mm-hmm. in the States for a little while, and for a month, I think, just driving around playing some really small shows and some bigger ones but yeah we were starting to get a name both over there and here and then apocalypse dudes came and people really started to notice the band and then we broke up <laughs> and then you broke up this was this uh milano thing that in in, in, in italy as uh oh, you can we can all read about it but uh um hank had to leave the band and and so you broke up and what did you feel at this point uh, you were not uh, not too long in the band. Uh, did you ever consider, or in, at this point, did you join another band? In in, in the meantime, as 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 the uh, as the as the band broke up, was breaking up and had broken up. Um, no, not really. Me and Tom, we had this little side project for a little while called um, the Oslo Motherfuckers, uh-huh, uh-huh. and um, um, but that was more like for fun. We never played any shows. And yeah. but I, I also played with the Euro Boys, other band, the Euro Boys. Oh, you were drumming on that on that band? No, as well? no I played oh. the percussion. Oh, 
didn't know that. I, I played drum on a couple of songs, I think, and then in in the studio with. with ah, okay. And then yeah. So, so that's was, interesting. Huh? Hmm. Know that. So then again, um, you were still in contact, obviously, with the guys, and uh, then you were reuniting. And was it was it from the first? I mean, the life. Tell us a little bit about the lifestyle as you were either on Apocalypse Cities or afterwards. Obviously, you rejoined the battle. The band came together again. Mm. And uh, what, what's the what's the lifestyle of a developing, so to say, cult? Now we're going to mention that word again, but cult band as Trooper Negro. What, what's the lifestyle of touring with all those, those those characters of the band, and then starting uh, after the re uh, the resurrection, the reunion? What with the two big guns and all that crazy mayhem that developed? What 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 what, what is is this a certain wild lifestyle I, I could I could think of, or is it just a is it blown up in the media to to be? Uh, it was a it was a pretty wild scene to be honest. <laughs> um, you know we the years after. Um, after the uh, comeback in night now in 2003 we toured a lot and uh we you know the the parting becomes kind of a uh, comes with a job almost the parting the, 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 yeah, the, yeah the, it becomes you know. kind of something you gotta you have to do you come to new city and there's um old friends or a record label throwing a party or you know after whatever. the concert so, i would i would think right yeah yeah so oh, okay. yeah it's a lot of drinking a lot of drugs uh, oh. in periods and uh but um we have managed to play really good shows anyway still, so yeah. still you know and you know it was like we were doing a bunch of drugs or uh, drugs at all before we went on stage not like that but there were mm -hmm. some late nights yeah yeah so looking yeah. back at this pretty at much this... every night <laughs> well i can imagine you can only do that when you're young yeah so at, at, at what point did you uh is it anything is, is this lifestyle this touring uh, i mean of course apocalypse dudes this album and then the, the other ones the scandinavian letter that followed was it was it accelerating that that whole band lifestyle at this point, or was it? A, is it a thing that you, at a certain point, you're getting fed up with? Uh, you get fed up with the partying. You know, for me, it's all. It's always been about the music, playing good shows, re recording good albums. That's the main focus uh, for all of us, I think, and at least for me. Uh, all the time that's the main focus the the partying and all that other crap that's just uh uh that something, that, yeah, yeah. something that happens yeah so, so you know traveling the world making decent money and uh playing sold out shows playing music you love and like and you play well What's not to like about that? You know? mm. Is is this something you look back and and, and, and are you still missing that? Uh, I'm, I I miss parts of it, yeah. Yeah, because I mean, yeah. the, during with Rubenigo, you were a, re a very relevant band, and uh, each and every night with uh, tons of people cheering on to you, it just must feel good, right? Yeah, of course, but it, it doesn't matter if you don't play, if you don't deliver. Yes, you know you can have twenty thousand people cheering, and you feel like you played a bad show, and that's not good. That's not a good feeling. So you 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 always felt accountable for you what how you actually performed on that on that night. Is there is there any concert that you would say that you or the band played their very very best? Uh, that's difficult. I know that's what I'm asking. Uh, yeah. No. Oh, I can't. I can't recall at the moment. Yeah, but uh, okay. there, there, there are many, of course, but not one that stood out in particular. 
uh, at, at the moment. Maybe if you ask me tomorrow, maybe I'll remember. But yeah, yeah um, I have I have to I have to see the I have to see the list of shows. Maybe I'll remember. Yeah, but the, well, I mean that's not that's not the main point. Maybe if it crosses your mind, we'll be happily posting yeah. it, or maybe get a find find a recording of it, which is a, quite a challenge. But um, going back to that, I don't live like, I don't like yeah. live recordings. I don't like live recordings of myself, anyways, or on my my own band. And why is that? Uh, usually, it sounds like shit. So live is is it because it's so clear, or is it because it's not and the emotional aspect of drumming at a live concert comes into play. Uh, I don't know, but usually uh, most of the live recordings I've heard, even though the show was really good, the recordings usually don't sound that good. That's just me. Maybe mm. they're good. I don't know. So going back to the, to the, um, to the, to the, the to your career with Tobin Negro, which spanned over quite a few albums. Um, what do you have a favorite album that it, that you were playing on, or is it is it? I mean, it's not because of the style of the German Negro music uh, of the death punk. If you want to go that mm -hmm. far, changed with uh, over the years. What style of of the German Negro music did you prefer or liked the most? Uh, do you mean of all the albums? Yes. Uh, I I have a soft spot for uh, for Scandinavian leather. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Um, I guess there's a different reasons for that. It was uh, like I said, I wasn't that much involved in the creative process on um, on um, the Apple Apple dudes, yeah. but uh, when you know when we recorded Scandinavian leather, we were it was. We were back after four years almost of not playing. Mm -hmm. um, we were back together again. Uh, we had a great time in the studio. We just spent a couple of months having fun in the studio. I was there all the time. And uh, yeah, we made a lot of the material in the studio, most of it actually. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it was also a really strange year for me because my brother, my older brother had died just mm. six months earlier. So I was kind of in a, a pretty fucked up state uh, that year. And, and then we started recording that album that helped me a lot with, with my, uh, my mood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you played a creative role in that album? You you, yeah. you you were a, 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 a big part of developing the style of that of that album, which I also love very much. I have to say, yeah, I, would say I was um, uh, pretty uh, yeah pretty important participant in the recording of that album. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. going back going back to the to the to the other albums, is there is, uh, so you were you were mentioning uh, if I'm getting that right that uh, Retox was your last album, right? Yeah, right. Um, how do you look at Retox uh, looking back? Because I, I've noticed in the internet and I'm, I'm following that stuff a lot that Retox was at the point of the release, it was not as welcome. I would just yeah, was mm -hmm. not as welcome as it looks now. Because if you look back at Retox right now, I got th this album gets lots, lots of positive reviews. What, what, what's your uh, look on to Retox? Because, because I'm asking, because this is your, the last album before you left. Um, to me, I, I think Retox is, um, has a lot of good stuff on it. And I, I really like what we did um, production-wise and also songwriting-wise. On that album and the thing about retox is that we spent we spent a lot, we spent so much time recording that we started recording it in in like april may 2006 i think and then we we went in a studio recorded a bunch of like basic tracks with me tom and knut doing the bass guitar and drums 
uh, for a bunch of songs, maybe 10, 12 songs. Then we went to another studio, recorded some more. I think we had like, we started, we didn't finish all of them, but I think we had like 25 different sketches uh, um, on tape for that that album. And we spent so much time in the studio and we're back and forth to New York to and New Jersey to mix the songs and um, yeah we spent a lot of time on it and we were pretty exhausted when it came out but I'm uh, I'm really happy with the result especially that one song that is never going to be played live and it's on the I think it's a bonus track on a CD the song Into the Void which you probably know and yeah remember, I, I consider that one of the, the best Turbo songs song uh, later later if I'm I don't, later I don't, I don't songs, remember it, to be honest. It is amazing. I mean, really check it out. It's I'll, I'll check it out. Such a good <laughs> song. It's never it's because it's it's I don't know, nobody ever ever talks about it in 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 a in a big way, but it's has so much energy. Um, mm -hmm. I might actually play that uh, after that um, for the podcast. Um, okay. Because it's so good, it deserves. It deserves to be a green puff, which is the cool. end of the of the podcast. So, um, going back to your career um, with the band, at what point and, and and why did you leave the band? Um, uh, I I, you know, I had a damage in my foot that the summer of um, two two thousand and seven, mm -hmm. right right before the festival season started. Something snapped in my in my uh, in my foot, uh -huh. but but I you know it was like two days before we were going to play some huge festivals in 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 Europe, and uh, there was no time to get a stand in. So I, I played all through that summer with uh -huh. a damaged leg, uh, like a, a bass drum, my bass drum foot. Uh -huh. It just got worse and worse and worse during the summer, and I, you know, at some point, I, I couldn't really play as good uh, as I usually do anymore. Uh -huh. So I had to take a break for a while, and then, and then, yeah, stuff happened in my life, and uh, I was getting a little tired of touring all the time doing kind of doing the same thing all over again yes every night so yeah so eventually you you decided to to quit the band yeah how how um, just and i'm not asking you for details of course um, yeah. uh, but how how did you just approach the whole band or were you just walking up to to a member and and, and telling them that they, they did they expect expect it because of your they they saw you your circumstances in life probably changing. Did they expect that, or was 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 this a shock? Uh, no, it was not a shock. I, it, you know, because I I had to have a stand in for a while. Thomas Dahl, he, he played for a, a tour, maybe mm -hmm. a, a European tour with Marilyn Manson, and uh, also a trip to the states. I think. Yeah, the guy with the baseball hat. I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you know it's kind of like uh, I just faded out, kind of. Yes. Yeah. Just... So um, would you would you say you would have done the, the same thing looking back, um, 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 leaving the band, or, or, or you is there are there certain moments where you say you regret that you left or had to leave the band? Um. I you know I, I miss uh, I miss the good times but you know I really wouldn't I've never been uh, heartbroken or bitter or anything you know but mm -hmm. you know I I miss certain aspects of it but that was then I was that was uh, almost yeah, like 13 years ago, so uh, we're younger then. 
and nobody's gonna take that away f- from you anyway. Yeah. Um, and um, um, just looking at your uh, at your current t- situation, are you are you right now? What 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 are you doing? What is your profession? What are you doing during the, during the day? Are you also playing in bands at the moment? I don't play in a band. I play with different different bands and uh, artists, like a session musician. Uh-huh. I play with stuff I like, uh, or if they ask me and I like it, then if I have the time, I, I do it. Uh, but in daytime, I work as a teacher. Uh-huh. Teaching kids or? Yeah, teaching kids nowadays, mostly 10th graders. So they're like 15, 16 years old. Do they know about your history with the band? Yeah, some of, some of them do. Or a lot of them do, but you know they were they weren't born almost when I yeah. uh, when I when Turbo was at its uh, peak in uh, uh, over here, anyways. Hey, so, yes, I mean it's so, minus fifteen years. Yeah. But would they do they grasp what what kind of music you played and how the whole scenery uh, with the to to be Jugend and the Trubo Negro and all that Sailor Man stuff going on? Is did they <laughs> ever have you ever been approached by 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 a by a pupil asking you? Uh, so why did you put on those sunglasses and why were ever was everybody in the audience dressed as as a gay sailor? Anything? Yeah, you know, the, the, there are some, you know, some uh, nosy uh, students that, uh, you know, check your name on uh, mm-hmm. Google, you know, Google mm-hmm. my name and uh, ask uh, questions like that. Uh, and, and there are also some some kids that are really in, into music, you know, that play music themselves and they obviously know the band. And But, you know, I try not to talk too much about that or brag about stuff yeah just, but you uh, think are you getting yeah. props a positive feedback more that because i mean you've been there right everybody like all the kids want to be cool and stuff and i don't know they tick the talk their way around <laughs> and whatnot and try to be cool and uh then again i mean you were the um the rolex drummer uh the right yeah back in the <laughs> days um so i think you have quite a CV on being cool for kids. I mean, you were on stage and whatnot. What, what else? They never know. Or, you know. Yeah. So it's a more positive thing, you would say, the pupils. But as, 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 you're not de- discussing it in, 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 in depth. I understand uh, that. No, if they ask, of course, but uh, but it's not, not nothing I uh, I bring up. bring up. Yes, I mean, yeah. uh, it's, it's perfectly understandable. But, but, you but, like so, it, you... but some of the other teachers at school, though, they they think it's fun to show uh, like live recordings or videos uh, of me. Oh, yeah. So I meet so I meet the uh, kids out in the school that hey, this guy played your band, blah blah blah. blah. Yeah. So, but it's fun. I mean, right? Yeah, I mean, sure. they also take it on with a good vibe uh, but i just i was just mentioning it was a core question of of, of this uh, uh of this interview the rolex drummer uh how, how come you are called the or, or some uh, hank called you the rolex drummer how, how did that happen uh it was why, uh, why is that uh, because i um um i keep uh, i keep the time i'm, yeah, I'm keep, good keep timing. A steady beat i keep a steady beat like a Rolex. Like clockwork. Exactly. Like mm-hmm. the clockwork of a good Swiss Rolex. Yep. But you were never, you never drummed with a Rolex or has ever, it came across my mind has, no, is Rolex as that cool that they would approach you? Would you, would you wear a Rolex while on a concert so we can have PR? No. <laughs> no, we were never that big. Yeah, but Rolex- yeah, we had a lot of endorsements, but not from Rolex. What endorsements were there? Because you're mentioning an interesting question. What endorsements were? were was it Van? Uh, was it Vans? Yeah, Vans and Volcom and Levi's. And Levi's. Stuff like that. Yeah, but not Rolex. Maybe it's a good thing. Yeah. All right. So, Chris, thank you, thank you for for taking your time and talking to us. Thanks for it, having. Me. It was a very very interesting interview. So, yeah, thank you very much and. Um, 
honestly, I can, uh, if there's going to be any re reunion or any tribute concert in a few years, we'll, we will see. Would yeah. you be able to, to, to be on drums for Turbo Negro and, uh, and keep the Rolex beat? Sure thing. I, you know, I still play drums and I, you know, but I probably had to, uh, would have to, to like warm up for a couple of weeks before. But good to know. Uh, yeah. But the, the, um, the mechanics are there. The muscles are a little, uh, little sloppy. And, and but, your, your foot is healed. Yeah. My foot is healed. It took, took like four years before I could play uh, properly again, you know? Oh. So it's pretty bad, but it's good right now, and that's the that's the main thing. So, yep. again, thank you for your time. Thank you for um, uh, taking your time to join us. Um, I, I'll, I'll be happy to have you on the podcast um, at a, at a later point. Um, thanks so much. All the all the all the all the the best wishes for this uh, for this new year. It's you gotta, too, man. It's gotta be a better one. And, yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's hope for that. And. Uh, yeah keep yep. on rock and rolling and if there's another band uh, uh, um, arising that we, you're going to be playing with let us know and we'll, you'll be on the podcast I will do thanks Daniel thanks Chris take care see you bye Green presented by ben so yeah, always good to uh, to dive back in, into the old days uh, of the band of Turbo Negro and get some uh, um, inside information and some pointers of um, of members or uh, former members. Uh, so I was very happy to um, to finally be able to record uh, an interview with Chris Summers. And if uh, yeah, I don't know if Hank van Helvete, who I've tried to reach quite a few times. Uh, um, if he's ever going to be listening to the podcast and if he wants to join a podcast, hop on, give me a call and I'll be talking to you. I'm very eager to do so. As mentioned um, in, the, in the podcast, I would like to finish up this episode with a cream puff of my own because the bangle is uh, uh, very busy with medical stuff. He's uh, working on, as I heard, he's working on his his uh, own interpretation of dealing with the coronavirus, which is basically skiing and spending time with his beloved ones, which is totally okay, but it gives me the chance to take over the cream puff again. Uh, uh, and as mentioned, I'm going to be featured, featuring a uh, bonus track of the Retox album, and the song goes uh, by the name of Into the Void, and I'd really, truly consider this song one of the better uh, songs that Turbo Negro has ever done. Give it a, if you, if you get a, ch a chance, give the whole record, the Retox record, a spin. And if not, just stick there for another few minutes and listen up as I'm going to be sending you Into the Void by the one, the only Turbo Negro. <laughs> 